Okay, hello there. Uh, mic check, can you hear me, Brian? I hear you great. How are you, Andy? Yeah, great, great, awesome. Um, hey, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to our viewers. Uh, today, well, over here, it's Thursday, the 20th of June, 2024. We have an exciting uh, episode ahead. Uh, you know, uh, we're going to get Brian to share with us what he thinks uh, is happening in the market. Uh, Bitcoin's at, what, 65 now, 65,000. Um, so how, how are things, Brian? How are you doing? Yeah, things are good. It's been a kind of a decline for once in crypto. So a lot of people are showing some signs of fear at the moment. And we're just trying to keep up with all of the uh, mood fluctuations from the crowd. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, 65,000, you know, um, some people, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, that there, there's a lot of fear, but it's not so bad, 65,000, is it? I mean, well, the, the fear around Bitcoin is somewhat tempered, but it's the altcoins that have really flushed. So the people that got greedy and got a bunch of meme coins and AI and big data and stuff like that, yep. <laughs> real world assets, those are the ones that are really declining uh, pretty aggressively over the past two months or so in particular. So even though Bitcoin looks OK, the overall crypto market cap has actually flushed more than it may appear. Ah, uh, OK, OK. Well, let's um, let's jump into it. It's uh, it's interesting because when, you know, Bitcoin, it, the, the Bitcoin dominance is still around 54 or 55 percent of total market cap. Um, and it's, it, it's interesting because every time Bitcoin drops a little bit, um, it's the alts that usually follow suit and, uh, and, and they drop by a much higher percentage than, than Bitcoin would. And yeah, obviously exactly. the inverse is true. <laughs> yeah, very much. There's a lot of uh, confusion going on right now. I, I guess earlier today, altcoins were actually doing quite well uh, while Bitcoin was flat. But that's kind of calmed down as it predictably did. And now it's kind of up to Bitcoin as to whether it's going to start to climb back up to 70K or, you know, range in 65K land or even potentially fall back to below 60. I'm hearing a lot of calls for 55K lately. So the bearish uh, voices are getting a bit louder. Interesting. Interesting. Shall we look at some charts to to see what's what's actually going on sure let me know if you can see my screen okay yep coming on there we go looking good yeah, so this is the last 30 days of performance you can see outside of a few exceptions like not coin and uh -huh. let which are up respectively about 165 percent each uh most of the rest of the markets are down we see Bitcoin here down about 9% over the past month, Ethereum down a little less, about 3.4%. So that's actually a rarity that where you're seeing Ethereum performing better than Bitcoin for, I think, the first one of the first months all year long, if not the first. Uh, and then you have a few that have really dropped a lot, like Internet Computer down 39% now, um, Optimism, Immutable X down significantly as well. So there are some big decliners over the past month, and it's kind of, you know, we, we're quickly finding out who the people were that were hanging on to Bitcoin versus some of these altcoins because the the latter are really frustrated right now with the uh, declining market caps and their portfolios shrinking. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's... it's um... Well, I, I, I suppose if you if you kind of look zoom out a little and, and, and you look uh, look back at where we came from, um, you would you would still see that, you know, um, it's actually still up a, a fair bit from from uh, from when the I guess the bull run started. Yeah, I mean, Bitcoin still looks great overall. We, we look at December 2022. Uh, this mm -hmm. was right after the FTX collapse that happened in early November. And prices yeah. were still like the 16Ks here. So, yeah. you know, just if I hold down shift and drag to the right, Bitcoin's about 4X since that point. 
um, which is amazing. But it's, um, you know, even just three months since the all-time high where we haven't climbed higher, traders get mm -hmm. impatient because a lot of them bought around here or even way back here. So, you know, now it's kind of wait and see time. And we're what we can explore on today's call is whether the crowd is getting too fearful, uh, which would be a good sign. That would mean that we're likely to see a bounce to wreck some, some shorts and things like that. Uh, or whether they're so optimistic, which would be a bad thing. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Let's uh, let's let's have a look at that. Yeah, I mean, while we're here, beginning with whales, we can see that the ten plus Bitcoin wallets. So this is kind of just sharks and above. Uh, it includes like big big exchange addresses, of course. So there are a lot of addresses that kind of get mixed into this that may not move their coins much with reason other than to provide liquidity. But regardless, you can see that the amount of Bitcoin held by 10 plus BTC wallets is back up to where it was two years ago now. It took a, a long journey where they dropped throughout 2022, particularly here around the FTX collapse. And then as the dust settled at the beginning of 2023, you started to see a gradual climb and then a very aggressive climb beginning in 2024. And it really hasn't stopped too much. You know, there were a few kind of pauses here in April um, while Bitcoin was declining, but they really started to accumulate after uh, Bitcoin got down to about 60K or a little below 60K here. And they've been adding ever since. So just since May 1st, they've added, uh, it looks like about 25.7K more Bitcoin to their collective wallets. That's a pretty good sign. Yeah, 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 definitely a, a good sign. And then moving on to the uh, crowd uh, mood at the moment. So we talked about mentions of buy or buying uh, during one of our pieces of content earlier this week. And I wanted to show kind of just the three month scale. And you can see how since the all time high that happened just before this date, on March 14th, it's mm -hmm. just been declining interest in buying overall. And you can see that it's kind of universal, especially on Reddit, it's really tailed off significantly. Mm -hmm. Twitter slash X, same thing. And then mm -hmm. 4chan, Bitcoin talk and Telegram, they're kind of flat. So this is a good sign that the crowd has become much less optimistic and they're starting to show some signs of FUD. And we can check that out as well if we look at something known as weighted sentiment right here. So this is just oh. a weekly level of sentiment overall where anything above the zero axis right here means they're a little more positive or euphoric compared to usual. Anything below means they're showing some doubt and fear. And what do yep. you know, ever since late May, we're on four weeks now where it's just been extremely negative as people have gotten very impatient. So that's a very good sign. I, I like this chart. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's pretty cool, right? I mean, we, yeah, we really yeah, haven't absolutely. seen this level of negativity in a very long time. Uh, we'd yeah. have to go back to, I mean, it gets skewed here because this is, this is when the Twitter, API changes were made after Elon Musk took over. So this gets skewed. But I see, you know, one moment here in November of 2023 is the only other time where we yep. were really in the same ballpark in terms of negativity. And obviously, yep. it's just blasted off from that point. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's, what we don't uh, want to see today. is something like this at the beginning of January. This was right before the ETFs were approved. So everyone was like, ah, you know, Bitcoin never should have climbed this far. Everyone's too optimistic about the ETFs. And then all of a sudden right here, ETFs get announced and we go through the roof until the crowd becomes euphoric again. And that's when we hit that all-time high. Yeah. So it's yeah. crazy how that works. Yeah, 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 absolutely. What's interesting, um, it, it's, you know, it's, it's always interesting. Um, I mean, uh, crypto aside, even, even if you look at, retail investor investors psychology uh for even you know just stocks right it's interesting because they um they always like to chase the pump 
and then um, so so they end up buying the high and then selling the low because then they get scared when it comes down and then they they'll wait they'll wait they'll wait and then they'll get to the point where ah you know that's it I give up and then they sell uh, which goes against the whole buy low sell high strategy and um, most retail investors end up buying high and selling low because uh, they can't control their emotions mm -hmm. exactly right yeah. yeah it's an emotional yeah. game and when you see such big swings uh, it's very easy to make the wrong choices. Absolutely, yeah. Wow. So we can also just look at how some of the points of interest have fluctuated over time. You can see right now, you know, meme coins, they're starting to get a little bit more interest. Layer 2s, pretty little. AI tokens, a little bit more because they had a big day today. Uh, GameFi, nothing really special going on there, but you can see what a big piece of the social interest it's had uh, since the beginning of the year. Layer ones, not too much interest. Stable coins, uh, not not really anything special. And then big time increases in Ethereum interest as of late. You can see this was when the ETFs were approved. So lots mm -hmm. of huge, huge social volume spikes there. And then after calming down, it's really starting to heat up again as the mm -hmm. SEC uh, just recently declared that uh, they're not going to pursue Ethereum further as a security. So that was a celebratory <coughs> piece of news that came out a little over 24 hours ago. Yeah. NFTs, yeah. FTX, bear market, airdrop, these are all pretty neutral, but it's really all about Ethereum and AI tokens right now that seem to be gaining some traction at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. And you may have seen Martin Shkreli in the news uh, with the DJT, Donald J. Trump token. Um, so he's been back in controversy and he's being talked about a lot. I'm not really seeing him as a bottom indicator or anything just yet, but uh, he does occasionally get in the news for uh, usually notorious reasons. And that can be Interesting. If we look at DJT by itself, the new token, mm -hmm. uh, there's not really anything going on here. If I just zoom in, no, not really anything. So I know it's out there, but it might be too early for us to track. Okay. And as far as trending coins, I would expect DJT and Ethereum, and they're number one and two right now. So Ethereum, of course, being... Uh, in the news for positive reasons because the SEC decided to drop its investigation as to whether Ethereum is a security, which led to a rise in ETH price. And this may have a lot to do with why altcoins got this temporary rebound today. Yeah, yeah. We got DJT, Lido, GCR, Pendle, Stellar's in the news, interestingly, Wample, that. Ol and base to round out the top 10. So if you're holding any of those coins or you're interested in holding those coins, understand that while they're under the microscope of the crowd, they're likely to see extra volatility compared to usual. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting that, um, that the SEC who was pursuing Ethereum as a, as a security um, has, has decided to to drop the case. That's um, that's quite a turnaround, isn't it? Yeah, it was sort of unexpected, but yeah. uh, they must have their reasons. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Sometimes they just have bigger and better things to worry about. <laughs> Pretty sure they do. That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah. So overall, the market seems kind of sideways right now or a little bit down right doesn't it mm -hmm. yeah okay okay um are there any indicators that uh you know show that you know that 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 we're um oh maybe we could take a look at the um oh yeah the daily active addresses so the address activity is declining. Uh, yeah. It's been moving yeah. down for the past three and a half months or so. Uh, so mm -hmm. that is a bit of a concern. We want to see over time the utility of Bitcoin rising. 
um, no matter what kind of cryptocurrency you're into, you're rooting for Bitcoin to see more utility over time and not less. So we are moving in the wrong direction right here. Mm -hmm. um, MVRV, which is one of the core metrics that we always keep a close eye on, it does show that traders on the shorter term are underwater, which is actually a good sign. If you were to buy in right, right now, you'd be yeah. doing so with less risk than usual, according mm -hmm. to average traders being down a little over 4% at this mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, the long-term uh, traders who have been active in the past 365 days, they're still up about 21%. So ideally, we want to get back to something like here where they're both below or very close to below 0%. Mm -hmm. so kind yeah. of a mixed bag there. I, I still you know, am worried about this teal line being quite so high. We would yeah. want to ideally see average traders on the long term getting close to neutral or even underwater again. Yeah, okay, okay. I also noticed that on the funding rate side, there are some shorts that are coming in, um, especially for Cardano and XRP, and we posted about that earlier today. So these shorts here indicate that people are actually trying to bet against Bitcoin and profit based on its decline. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be a good sign if we continue to see heavy shorts coming in because uh, those shorts are primed to get liquidated. Anytime there's an extreme in either direction, they're, pr they're primed to get liquidated and the price moves the opposite direction with, you know, in this case, shorts acting as rocket fuel to allow prices to go higher. So if we see a little more consistency with these or even like an extreme short, like we saw back on the 15th, that would be a very good sign. It's interesting. Whale transactions, not too much here. It seems like the whales have kind of just been cruising along. As we saw earlier, they are still accumulating over the past couple of months. So that is a good sign. Yeah. Mean dollar invested age. So it does show that there's some dormant movement. Let me maximize this a little bit. Okay. So this, this yellow line, we we're rooting for it to go down constantly because it indicates that the average age of, of coins sitting in wallets is continuing to dip over time. Right now, we're seeing it start to rise once again. This was due to the Mt. Gox trustee moving a bunch of coins, uh, billions mm. of dollars back in late May. That's the only reason yep. why that occurred. But the line really started to flatten out shortly after the all-time high hit at the beginning of April. So this was a clear yeah. indicator we were in a bull run from mid-October all the way until early April. After this line started to go up again, it meant that those whales are finally done moving those, you know, old aging coins that had just been sitting and adding circulation back into the main supply. So now we're at this point where we could potentially start to creep up again, and that would be a sign that we're getting stagnant. So as you can see, a few more bad signs than good right now. Um, supply and exchange is moving down. That's a good sign. We don't yeah. want to see the supply moving through exchanges. That would indicate, you know, a big sell-off might be planned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's kind of not the best picture at the moment uh, for the technical traders out there. The RSI mm -hmm. is showing 41, which is good. Anything below 50, which is right here. That indicates mm -hmm. that uh, we're in a better than average moment where we could mm -hmm. see a bounce, and that's probably because we've been declining pretty aggressively the last couple of weeks. Um, and this, alternatively, was a sign that we were very close to a top. So you want to see the RSI staying low like this. But yeah, a few more bearish signs than bullish signs, um, okay. which I know people don't want to hear. Um, Crazy things have happened, though, and we've seen rebounds after, uh, you know, moments that have looked pretty dismal before. And this could be no exception. It depends if something triggers it, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I think um, considering the, you know, uh, the bull run that we've had, uh, you know, it, it's always uh, it's always nice to have a bit of a pause, a bit of a 
you know, a uh, bit of a, yeah, a, a cool down. Mm -hmm. And and we'll see where it goes after this. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that, you know, the impatient holders are starting to get shaken out here. And that's usually necessary for rises to continue. Yes. There needs to be an equal amount of sellers as buyers in order for prices to continue rising. Absolutely. And you can see here, you know, comparing to the equities markets where the S&P 500 has continued to test those new all-time highs, it's actually been going the opposite direction of crypto, which is rare. Uh, you can mm -hmm. see that it, the S&P was actually off today for a U.S. holiday. Uh, but mm -hmm. overall, it's, it's at that all-time high level while Bitcoin has really struggled, uh, especially if we look to its you know, top, I guess we could call this the top back on June 7th. Bitcoin is down about a little over 9% while the S&P is up 2.5%. So the correlation between the two is very minimal. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, uh, Brian, you mentioned it's a U.S. holiday today. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, well, thanks for coming on. Appreciate you taking time out to oh, no jump worries. on I, during the holiday. We're a yeah. global, global company at Santiment. So I, I generally, unless it's a major holiday, I'm still working. So I, I'm always happy to be here with you, Andy. No, thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Yeah. No. Yeah, look, uh, I, I, I guess overall um, there's been, I, I guess the, the markets, oh, oh, sorry, crypto markets have declined a little. Um, I, uh, you know, from a, from a, cause looking at it from a medium to longer term perspective, uh, from my end, it, it, it's, I, I, I think, um, you know, adoption, um, from the institutions, um, or, uh, access to adoption from the institutions are, uh, slowly, coming up you know uh with with the with the introductions of the etfs um not only in the us but then hong kong australia thailand um i i, I think um you know slowly more and more corporates or institutions are warming up to the to the idea of um adding you know a bit of bitcoin onto the balance sheet and so i i think um it, it, it'll happen over time uh, from a medium to longer term perspective. Uh, and it, it, in the meantime, uh, I guess uh, markets just having a bit of a cooling down period. Yeah, it, it appears so. And we're just going to have to see how things play out. I, I think there, there's an argument where Bitcoin and alt altcoins can decline a bit more. I know today was a pretty decent rebound day for a lot of non-Bitcoin assets out there. But I wouldn't be surprised if we spend another couple of weeks kind of chopping and potentially sliding a bit more until mm -hmm. traders become very impatient um, and start spewing bearish sentiment all over the place. And that's that's the sign that we're finally at that bottom again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, <clears throat> I, I guess, uh, I, I guess we're, we're almost, uh, on time. Do you, do you have any, any, any last, uh, or any, any thoughts you want to share about the market? No, I can't think of anything else. We covered a good, uh, diff a bunch of different aspects of the markets. And, um, I think when we revisit this in, in mid July, we'll, really be able to understand how accurate these metrics were. Uh, usually they are, but anything yes. can happen. And I recommend that anyone who is interested in sentiment, you know, check out our, check out a free trial. Uh, just go to app.sentiment.net slash pricing, open a free trial. If you want to purchase a month after you enjoyed the trial for two weeks, uh, type in equities tracker at checkout and you get 25% off. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's it's a it's a really really cool site. You know, it it it, it contains so much information. <laughs> you uh, you you yeah, you'll be you'll be amazed at how much uh, information there is 
on on the site especially you know um if if you're into data if you're into analysis if you're into uh, on-chain analytics uh sentiment analysis um absolutely recommend it thank yeah. you for the kind words andy it's always nice uh, to show off our metrics to you and your community so thanks again always always i you know i i think what we try to do is expose the community to you know uh bite size uh uh uh, on chain analytics, it's it's um, uh, it's it's not easy, but um, once you once you figure a few things out, then you kind of figure out more. It's it really it, it really does. Uh, you realize that that there's a lot of transparency uh, in terms of um, seeing where movements are, what you know, what's happening, uh, what's actually happening. Uh, and, and to be honest, like we're we're from the TradFi space, and um, it's it's a lot more transparent than, uh, than TradFi, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, yeah, it's great. Well, Brian, thank you so much, uh, for jumping on during, during the holiday. Really appreciate it. Uh, always great to see you. Likewise, man. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, have a nice evening uh, and, and enjoy. Have a good one. Enjoy your morning, my friend. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, thank you sir. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.